Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today we are gonna make a very simple leather sheath using the $115 leather sewing machine for the pair of scissors that I just made. Check it out. All right, so if you watched my most recent video, I made this pair of scissors. Now, they're pretty sharp on the very end, so I wanna make a little sheath for them. And I'm going to use the hand crank $100 leather sewing machine that I spoke about in a video a couple of years ago. Now, I'm gonna do this kind of like free form. I'm not really gonna do too much planning beforehand. And I'm gonna show you how I would go about making a sheath for these scissors using that hand crank sewing machine. So starting out, I've got some six ounce veg tan leather and I've got the scissors uh, in question here. So the shape that I wanna make is sort of like a pyramid shape. So I am going to sketch right onto the leather and this would be actually the backside uh, the inside of the sheath so I can draw on this with pencil and I won't ever really see those marks again. And I wanna kinda come up on the sides um, and have an area you know, at the tip for maybe even a grommet. And I'm just basically gonna sketch around the scissors. I want the pouch to kinda end maybe like right around here and come up on an angle. This'll be my center line that I'll bring all the way up and then it'll end up top um, with some belt loops up here. So I can sort of just sketch a line across, sketch some lines up the sides here, and then I will draw a line straight down the middle for my angle. Now I want the angles coming off the bottom to be the same. So I'll make sure that I kind of make this thing symmetrical. I think that should be good. I can make this bottom a half inch and then I can draw some lines up from there. And then we'll come up the sides here for the top of the sheath. So now I like to cut my leather out just with like a box cutter and now we can go ahead and cut this back section off. So this will be the back um, of the sheath. Now I'm going to put some belt loop lines in this, some cut lines so that it can fit on a belt, but we'll do that later. And now I'm going to actually use this as a template for the, the top section. Now, I really just want to find a place that this is going to fit, you know, on my leather piece. And I'm only going to go up to where that other line is. So I could probably even sneak this out of right here. Yes, perfect. So we're going to take this, going to trace it out. Now I've got my top section. Now, the other thing I'm going to add to this is a little kind of like loop. Um, and for that, I can just find something round. I have this washer. I actually use this a lot and I like the shape of that. So we'll put that over in there and we'll trace that. And that'll be our kind of like grab loop. It'll also just kind of make it look a little nice. So now I've got my two sections cut out. So to glue these together, I'm gonna to use this little kind of scuffing tool and I'm gonna scuff the back section. And since I'm gluing to the back of this leather, I won't need to do anything to it. Now I'm gonna use this water-based glue and I'm going to apply it to here. Then I'm gonna put the pieces together put some weight on it and let it sit for a little bit before I stitch it. Now the key thing here is don't get any of this glue on your fingers because if you do and you get some of it on the leather, it will never come off. And you don't need a lot of this because it's gonna spread out under the pressure. And this is Aqualim 315. I'll put a link to this glue in the description of the video. I like to give it a little tap. And then we'll put some weight on it and let it sit for a little while. 
Okay, so now this has been sitting for a little while with some weight on it, I can actually just trim it down a little bit. Now it was a little bit oversized, so I'll flip it to the back side and just trim off any excess, get nice straight lines like that. So now we're in pretty good shape, looks pretty good. And we're gonna have our, our cuts up here. But first, before we do that, we are going to stitch it. And that's where the hand crank sewing machine is gonna come into play. Ignore the messy desk. All right, so you may recognize this. This is the hand crank leather sewing machine. I did a video on this a couple of years ago and lots of people bought them. Lots of people asked me questions about them and I still use mine all the time. Now there's a little kind of nuance to it and you have to sort of understand how to use it in order to get good results out of it. But I do use it for stitching leather. It's easily gonna stitch through these two layers of leather. And uh, one of the things I did to it was I did add these little clamps, which keeps this foot from rotating. Now, when I use mine, I only use one of the, uh, the, the, the way that I use the pressure discs. Uh, there is a good amount of tension um, and I wound up getting really good results. I'll put a link in the description on what needle I use and what thread that I use. And we're gonna stitch this up. So I like to put a line which is gonna dictate where my stitches are gonna go on my actual piece, because otherwise it's really easy to kind of run off, uh, you know, kind of wild. So we're gonna put some lines on there and then we're gonna stitch basically right over those lines. So now I'm gonna bring my foot down and I'm gonna start out with a straight stitch, then we're gonna back stitch to lock it in and then we'll sew the rest. So that initial kind of pierce is important Then what I like to do is with the needle in there, rotate the piece back around and do my back stitch. So I broke my thread. I'm actually going to get back out of this and start the stitch over. Now it's not uncommon for the thread to get a little jammed up, especially when you're pushing it through leather. But what's nice about this machine is since the stitch length is pretty consistent, you can usually, if you do wind up breaking your thread, you can usually get the next round of stitches to go through the exact same holes. So it doesn't wind up looking like a mistake when you're completely done. So basically what I've just did was I pulled out all my thread, you can see, but I've got some holes in there, but we're gonna stitch right through those again. Okay. So now we'll line this up, bring the foot down, and we'll try to get that needle to go right into the same hole, the starting hole like that, and then we'll bring the foot down, and then we should be able to stitch right in those exact same holes again. Exactly. So now we'll turn around, we'll back stitch to lock it in. Turn around again and continue to sew along that line. Now with this machine, the faster you go and the more momentum the needle has, the better the machine will operate which can be a little counterintuitive because you're trying to sew very consistently. So moving fast can be hard. And I did do a video where I put a motor on one of these, but I actually choose not to use the motor because I found that it can be a little too fast. I'm actually gonna just move a little bit and jump a stitch. And I like actually hand cranking it. So the motor is cool, but I prefer to hand crank when I can, especially something for this short. Back stitch here. All right, now, 
Now, what I do is I actually pull some thread out so that I don't rip the thread here because it's very easy to tear that thread. Now, the only thing I kind of messed up and I don't love so much is this stitch here at the bottom, but this thing's just for me and I'm gonna throw a grommet down there so you probably won't even notice it. So you can see this thing is sewn. The back of it looks pretty good. That one stitch looks really stupid, but we're gonna live with it. And uh, this thing is solid. So now if we go to put our scissors in there, or if let's say we were making this as a sheath for like a knife, um, it's gonna be super tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get this thing nice and wet, get it soft, and then we're gonna push the scissors in there and they are going to sort of make their own path um, and that's going to help stretch out the leather, press it in on the sides, and then we can move through and finish it up. Okay, so this leather is wet. It's nice and soft. Now I can take the scissors in this case. You can see how it's like stretching that leather and I'm pushing up kind of as I'm pushing them in because I don't want that tip to dig in. And since these are semi kind of like directional in the way that they go in there, I'm actually gonna push these in from uh, on both sides so that it doesn't matter which way you put the scissors back. And the thing I wanna do here is I wanna be pushing them down against a flat surface. So I'm really only stretching that top piece of leather. We'll put them in the other way. I'm just gonna open things up a little bit in the other direction. And again, just, just pushing down towards the flat table to really stretch just the top there. Nice, so I have a nice fit. And now what I'm gonna do, because the tip of those scissors could poke through and kind of cut that, we're gonna put a grommet right at the bottom just to kind of seal these up nice. And this is looking good. Now, like I said, I'm gonna add some slices here for belt loops uh, to go on a belt, but we're gonna use uh, the grommet punch for that as well. So. Leave that in there for a second while that starts to dry. Now these are carbon steel scissors, so I don't wanna leave them in there too long because that moisture will cause them to rust, but I can leave them in there for a couple minutes. Now what some people will do is they'll pin this down to wood, and if you're doing like a real nice job, but we're going fast and loose here, and I think this thing is gonna come out really nice once it's all dyed up and done. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting a hole down here to put one of these little rivets in there. So I'm using this little punch. We're gonna pop a hole right there in the center. Now I don't wanna hit my thread, but it would be nice if it kinda of hid my, my crime. Punch that hole through. Nice, now we'll take a little rivet. And these I got on Amazon. I'll put a link to these as well. Now they make special little tools for setting these. I never really use them. I just use a little bench block and a punch and I get that thing to set with a hammer. Just like that. So now that will keep anything from poking through the bottom. So we're gonna use my belt as a reference and we're going to make some marks to cut some loops in the leather so that we can fish it around a belt. So if I were to use my belt like that and just kinda of draw a line, it's the edges of my belt. Now I can take my pencil and sort of just understand where I wanna be. We're gonna go a little bit beyond that. But what we're gonna to do to keep the leather from tearing is we're actually gonna punch holes right beyond both of those spots and then we're gonna connect those holes with a cut line. So now we'll take the knife and we'll connect those dots. You wanna be careful not to go past your little holes that you just made. So now, this will fit on my belt. 
my scissors will fit in it and that's looking pretty good so we'll clean up the corners we'll let it dry for a little bit and then we're gonna dye it all right so I gave this some time to dry and now we are going to dye it with this uh, light brown leather dye and in my experience it's actually okay if it's a little bit wet um, it's gonna hold the dye the same so I'm clip off this bottom corner a little bit try to kind of clean that up um, and in order to kind of clean up these edges you can use sandpaper you can use a belt grinder whatever we're gonna kind of leave it like this we'll take a little dyeing brush and coat this thing so I go right over the thread and I go right over the rivet because the dye is not going to stick to the rivet and the thread is already black so if you had white thread you'd want to dye all the pieces before you stitch it otherwise the white thread will get dyed whatever color you go and I don't I try to give it actually a little bit of a kind of uh, streakier look I like kind of streaking it up and down I think it gives it a little bit of character um, and I'm not going for you know this this perfect looking thing I want it to to stand out as something that I made for this particular piece so I give it some little kind of striations and I sort of brush it back and forth and when it's dry Sometimes it'll hold on to a little bit of that character and I get a little bit of dye down inside as well so that when you look in there, you can't see that there's no dye in there. And then I will leave that to dry. Also, you want to wear gloves when you do this because leather dye loves getting into your skin and it does not love coming out so that looks nice we'll leave that to dry so after giving these a day to dry they've hardened up and now that little allen key screw kind of pops in and locks these in and you can see how the dye has evened out and it actually looks kind of nice and distressed where you've got those kind of pressure points on the side and this thing came out great. I can soften up the leather with a little bit of oil or some kind of boot wax, but once it levels out, really nice little product, super easy to make. All right, that about does it for this video. Like I said, very simple and not even really the proper technique for making a leather sheet. There are tons of great leather workers that have YouTube channels that you should go and check out and learn a little bit more technique. But the point of this video is to show that you don't need a lot to make a leather sheath if you've got one of these leather sewing machines. I mean, I put that rivet in the bottom, but even you could probably avoid that. So it's basically just some leather, a box cutter, and this thing. And I made this sheath in, you know, very little time. The stitching itself took just a couple of minutes. So I get a lot of questions about this thing. I made the video a couple of years ago. It's gotten a lot of views. Um, a lot of people have bought these. And I think a lot of people have had success with them. Some people, though, haven't been able to get them to thread right or haven't been able to get them to work correctly. Um, that's where you kind of have to do a little bit of research, right? There's some tension discs on there. There's different ways to thread the machine. And all in all, I would say that most of these that you would go out and buy work. Most of them come with a little test piece to show that they do stitch. If you're having trouble with it, though, and you bought it from Amazon, you have 30 days to return it. So what I would say is if you get one of these, you bought one and you can't get it to work, return it and try it again. Um, there is a chance that you got it dud, but mine I've had for a couple of years. I've sewn a lot of leather with it. I mean, it just blazed through these two layers, no problem. And I was able to make this, you know, little holder for the scissors so that I could kind of carry them around, not have to worry about them poking through something. So I love having this thing. I use it all the time. And, you know, I wanted to kind of show that it is versatile and show you how you can very easily make a simple leather pocket, little leather, leather sheath, uh, without too much effort. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a comment, please leave it down below. Any questions, let me know. I'm going to put links to the thread and the needle that I use because that's a question I get all the time. I did put a motor on this at one point, but at the moment I'm not using it. I'm trying to rework that and figure out a better way because it's a little bit too fast for me. And if you haven't already seen the video where I make these scissors out of a railroad spike, 
check that out. I'll put a link to that down below as well. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop on Instagram. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more cool videos like this and some of the projects that I have coming up. And I hope to see you there. Thanks.